I'm drowning. Such a heavy load. I'm scared. Tired. I don't know. And those masters, a lot of masters and yeah. This is not a metaphor. This is me, 12 years old. I was on a seven day camping trip through the rainforest in Mexico. I was the younger, the youngest of the group. The first three days of the trip were pure hell. I couldn't believe that I got myself into that. We were walking beside the river, crossing the river several times a day. The boots always wet, the clothes always wet. I was walking behind the pack all the time. And when I finally got to the resting place, everybody stood up and started walking again. <laughs> there was no rest for me. <clears throat> on the second day of the trip, the shoulder straps on my backpack just gave up. And I had to carry my backpack in front of me for the rest of the day. It was miserable. On the third day, an older friend offered to exchange his backpack with mine. His was state-of-the-art, aluminum frame, super comfortable, but it was heavy. He had extra food and extra clothes because he was helping the rest of us. It was that day that as I was crossing the river one more time, my legs gave up and I fell face down into the river with not enough strength to push me up. And at some point, not even the desire. At 12 years old, thought that's how I, how I was going to go. I am certain that at some points in your life, you've been there. You've been feeling that everybody else is walking ahead of you. You are staying behind. That you are carrying a load on your shoulders heavier than anybody can carry. Feeling Thankfully for me, my cousin came back, running, grabbed my hand, and pulled me up. After the scare, the whole group decided to sit down for lunch. And as I was sitting there, looking around, I saw that everybody else was happy. Everybody else was enjoying the trip. They had walked the same distance as me. They had crossed the river as many times as me. Their clothes were wet, and it had taken them exactly the same time to get to this point. The only difference was my own attitude. It was at that point that I decided to stand up and start walking ahead. For the next two days, I was in the purgatory. It was very hard. It was very punishing, but I was redeeming myself. I was walking ahead. On the fifth day, we, the group up the front, decided to change directions, go uphill away from the river, until we found a very nice grassy area with a blueberry tree, or blackberry tree. We climbed the tree, we satiated our need for sugar, we rested on the grass under the shade of the tree. That day, and the next, and the next, it was pure heaven. And that was the lesson that that child taught me. That as hard as it was getting ahead, and as punishing as it was 
staying ahead, I was really happier leading than staying behind. Yet, getting ahead is very hard, and staying ahead is very difficult. You have to study a little bit longer, work a little bit harder, train with a little bit more enthusiasm. But at the end of the day, you will feel that you will have the time to reflect on what you've done. You will have time to change directions. And you ha will have the opportunity to show other people the way. So next time you're down, you can make that choice. You can stay behind and complain, or you can do as that child. Pick yourself up, get ahead, make the extra effort to stay ahead. Next time that you're down, what will be your choice?